Shove it, man! It's time to do something a bit different on the Shove It Show today. For those of you who are a creepy stalker type, you may have scrolled back to see that my very first YouTube videos were game reviews. So I guess you can say that today, I'm going back to my roots. Hello mate, I'm Bob the Builder. Inhabited land incurs additional expense because people are reluctant to move. Which means, if I put my stupid yellow hat in a field, you'll have to pay me to move it. Oh, hello again. I Tommy lady, she be begging for it please, but her kid be calling me dada. So I send her on the railway to the Ala Asta. Asta. Uh, I think you can all see why I never made it as a game reviewer. Caught not the hustle though, it was definitely there. But you all know me, I don't like to talk about anything that's been done to death. Which is why you won't see me doing a review on the TNA Impact video game for 2008 that you all know, but most of you likely don't love. On that subject, I do want to just say, how are the graphics still better in parts than modern wrestling games? The developers did an amazing job on the game graphics. Shame they didn't spend more time on the rest of it. Anyway, we're not here to talk about that game. We're here to talk about the final game TNA ever released in 2011. I thought this would make for a good video because no one's really even acknowledged its existence. This one would be called TNA Wrestling Impact from Namco Studios and it was for Android phones. Seeing as this game is from the peak of the Hulk Hogan era in TNA, there's bound to be some funny things in this game. Now I've spent literal hours trying to get this thing working again and this is the best I can do. It's playable but I can't control it very well, all I've got is a mouse working, no keyboard. When you load up the game, you are greeted to a lively menu with the TNA theme from that era blasting out at you. You've got options of career mode, exhibition mode, achievements, of which I have none in life, and TNA video. TNA video I believe used to bring you to their YouTube page. Achievements is stuff they want you to do in the game. They've all got wrestling lingo for their titles. I just want to be a Hulkamaniac. By selecting exhibition, you're given the choice of the arena. It's the good old impact zone. Bound for glory, turning point, or final resolution. Unfortunately, there's no victory road. There are six match types in this video, which isn't that bad for a mobile game. Singles, submission, falls cat anywhere, no DQ, cage, and tag. Now onto the wrestler selection screen. The first wrestler that you see is the Idiot Abyss. Is that the game developer's recommendation? I have to admit, the model looks okay. AJ Styles. Hernandez, who looks horrible by the way, he has a melon head. Kurt Ank also has a big head, and it doesn't even look like him. RVD looks alright. Samoa Joe also looks deformed. The Icon Sting, the Pope D'Angelo De Niro. Strangely, Desmond Wolf can't have appeared in many video games in his time. Jay Lethal, sadly not the Black Machismo version. Douglas Williams, the Motor City Machine Guns, who both look really nice. And Cowboy James Storm and Robert Roode. Kevin Nash also makes a surprise appearance. He is the toughest man on the roster. Mr. Anderson and a wild slap nuts appears. Jeff Jarrett. To round off the wrestlers, we've also got Ric Flair, Jeff Hardy, Tommy Dreamer. Why is Tommy Dreamer in this game? And even more confusingly, why the hell is the Welsh Roider Rob Terry in this game? Jeff Hardy's stoner friend also makes an appearance to round off our selection. So a pretty good choice for a mobile game. Not sure how they decided the wrestlers, but who cares? After selecting your opponent, you are given the choice of difficulty. And I'm going to have to play on easy because I don't have a keyboard. Give me a break. They actually put mini entrances with the music, which is a really nice touch for a mobile game. Even if the wrestlers do show a complete lack of emotion. They're really missing Pyro in this too, it just looks silly at times. You're met with a standard looking wrestling game, although I guess the 3D environment is alright. It all boils down to button smashing. You've got a strike button, a grapple button, and a run button. I frantically smash the buttons hoping I can do a move quicker than my opponent, and most of the time I will, because it's on easy mode I guess. You will see a never ending spree of suplexes in this video because I can't seem to do much else. The game feels very clunky as moves struggle to connect. It's all a bit slow and depressing. You will also find two meters. One is for health and one is for momentum which gets you a finisher. And let me tell you brother, the finisher system is one of the dumbest that I've ever seen in a wrestling game. As long as your opponent is on their feet facing you, you can just frantically hit the finisher button and you do it. No method or tactics here, just press it as soon as you filled up your momentum meter. 
Doesn't even matter if you're in control of the match or not. Your opponent doesn't have to be dizzy. Just hit the button. And then once you've hit your finisher, you can waddle over to your opponent and win the match. The finishers look a mixture of good and bad. And from what I can tell, once you've earned your finisher, you can never lose it, even if you get beaten up for the next five minutes following earning one. So calling a momentum is stupid. I find myself doing more high flying and running moves because I can't seem to do more than a suplex. There's also some things that certain wrestlers can and can't do, depending on if they're a high flyer or a powerhouse. It's nothing that interesting, it's like powerhouses can pick you up in a fireman's carry position and high flyers can apparently jump over the rope. Never seen it happen though. Submission mode is exactly the same as the singles mode, except when your opponent is down on the floor with enough low health, you can press a button to apply a submission. And that's it. No work in a body part here, seems a pretty pointless inclusion. If your opponent's health is in the red, they will most likely give up, and it's straight away. Fools count anywhere and no DQ are the exact same thing from what I can tell. Either way, it doesn't matter, the only way to get a weapon is to press the button when you're walking towards the crowd. And it's impossible without a keyboard, so I can't show you it. This is a good time to tell you about this really annoying habit the computer has when they're on low health. They will climb out of the ring and just stand there staring at you for 5 seconds, but nothing happens and health doesn't regenerate. It's just a complete time waster. It makes me wonder if they meant to add in regenerating health and just ran out of time. Cage matches are also a complete waste of time because I can't climb out the cage. But whilst it looks okay, this big grey shadow keeps covering most of the screen. I really don't have anything else to say. I was surprised to see in tag team mode that there is actually a couple of tag team entrances. I mean they don't do anything, they just stand there like morons, but a nice little feature I guess. And tag matches? They're the most pointless feature in this entire game, because the wrestlers who aren't the legal man will never move from their spot unless they're tagged in. So just completely ignore them and pretend it's a singles match. That's what they seem to be doing anyway. So exhibition sucks. Luckily we have a career mode to play through. Your first choice you need to make is Heavyweight, X Division or Tag Team. Well seeing as Tag Team matches suck on this game, I'm not choosing that. You're now given a choice to create a wrestler or use a TNA wrestler. I decided to give Create a Wrestler a go. It turns out it's one of the most basic Create a Wrestlers you've ever seen. And just like that, we're in the ring with the Hulkster. He asks if we need a refresher, which at this point we most certainly do not. He says we're going to get the same opportunity as everyone else. In TNA, everyone has to earn their spot. I guess unless you've come from the WWE. We now meet with the leader of the Grey Crew, Eric Bischoff. The crew are debating who our debut match should be against. Bischoff decides on the Welsh roider Rob Terry, because he's got a lot of respect for how many steroids he shoves up his ass. These fucking titles are so poorly designed, you skip to the next text box just to read one word. And here he is, it's Congo John. It was the ugliest match I've seen so far since playing this game, with both men seemingly unable to land a punch. I end up beating Rob the Roider with one random kick. You are now given points to increase your stats. Seeing as I'm yet to even see what effect charisma has on the game, I'm putting it all on my power meter. Wow, look at the size of those knockers. We are now given a difficult choice, I guess to establish if you're going to be a heel or a face. Heel all day and night. My next match against Rob Van Dam ends to a double axe. I've not even earned the finisher yet as far as I can tell. More power! We are praised by the Hawk for our performance. The leader of the Grey who wants us to have a real opportunity, a pay-per-view match with Desmond Wolfe. I guess making Rob do the job wasn't quite as big a deal somehow. But first, we must beat the Pope. A Desmond Wolf promo where you can tell they actually put some effort in because it doesn't sound generic. It's a promo that he would actually cut. Shame they can't spell the word appropriate right. At least I think. Let me check if apropose is a word. Oh, it is. Well, I've never heard anyone use that word in my life. TNA video games teaching me English lessons now. At this point, I learned it's virtually impossible to get a count out win. Your opponent gets straight back up when you hit them on the outside of the ring. Even when I ran into the pole like a complete moron, my opponent, the Pope, ran back out to break the count and save me at nine. 
If you lose a match, you just do it again, so it's very linear. I beat the Pope and then Desmond Wolf randomly appeared in the ring and smacks me once and then starts to cut a promo. It looks really bad, whoever designs that needs a smack of their own. It says ambush on the screen and now I'm told I must perform a finisher to win. I do this by mostly spamming stamp on Wolf. I'm not too concerned about the pay per view. Now it's a no DQ match against Wolf. I'm unsure if this is the pay per view because no one said anything. I taste a steel chair for the first time here but it doesn't seem that impactful when I win the match. Due to those few wins, it seems like I'm starting to move into contention for a title shot. Hogan pulls a swerve and says, that doesn't work for me, brother. The leader of the Grey Crew is being a dick, as he's often known to be. He gives you, I guess, a match that sounds like a number one contenders match against Douglas Williams. Bischoff insinuates that we have to do him a favour and return. This is never mentioned again. Congo John on the casting couch. So I beat Douglas Williams of ease. Now I get to interact with a rather wacky AJ Styles. He stirs the pot and tells us the Grey Crew is secretly protting against us. It's here we're given another choice. Walk away or ambush Hogan. Come on now, you'll know what I'm going to be picking here. Hogan is in the ring and we randomly smack him once and that's apparently the ambush. I hoped he'd gone further. Hogan's very angry about our actions. We've apparently unleashed Hulkamania. Well, seconds later we do get to fight Hogan. You win if you hit him with a finisher and he turns out to be my toughest test to date. I still jackknife powerbomb him though. The next day the leader of the Grey Crew tells us that he's not going to fire us because controversy creates cash. He says we have to beat Hogan on pay-per-view to earn a title shot. Turns out that AJ Styles was the champion but that was unclear up to this point. Lose and we're fired. At this point I'm the fastest fat man on the roster. Hogan is now saying that he loves me like a brother, but that doesn't mean he likes me. Well which one is it? He will now show us we need to respect Hulkamania tonight. Well the match with Hogan is again my toughest to date. He becomes the first man to kick out the jackknife. I still make him do the J.A.B though. Hogan now respects Congo John. We have our match against AJ Styles for the belt in a cage match. Now, I know what you're all thinking here. It's game over. Congo John can't climb the cage. He's too fat. And not only that, I can't climb the cage on this Mac. Well, I was delighted to learn that pinfall counts in this cage match. It went two minutes and I am now the champion. Tanae calls it the greatest match of all time. Oh look, they did create a belt sprite. Why wait until now to use it? Hogan tells us that we're the best there is. Then it just ends. We are informed that we have unlocked the Hulkster for exhibition match, and you'll be pleased to know that he's probably the strongest character in the game. And yes, his finisher is the leg drop, although we never get to see that in real TNA. I don't think that highlight can ever be topped in this game, so I think we're done here. This might sound like I hated this game, but you've got to remember this was just a game on your phone. I'm sure on a harder difficulty it could kill half an hour or so, but then you could also spend half an hour watching paint dry. The moves were repetitive, the matches were repetitive, the story was too linear, and at the end of the day it all just came down to button mashing, and no one could smash a button better than me. I've had plenty of practice smashing things watching so much TNA over the years. The graphics were actually okay, and there was some semblance of effort here. But it was just too boring. It was interesting to see that this game is completely different to the console release. But did you know, there's another TNA game which is also different. Way different. And it might actually be good. And if you don't agree with that, I'll show you why you should. <laughs>